Ah, oh, the Monaco Grand Prix. The jewel in the Formula 1 crown. But the racing there sucks. But with the new Formula 1 aerodynamic regulations, can these new cars for 2022 save the Monaco Grand Prix? Let's find out. The Monaco Grand Prix is one of the oldest races ever. The first one being held on April 1929. That's pretty old. Back in the day, racing there was so much better as the cars were smaller. I mean, yes, you had an increased risk of death every time you got in one, but who cares? Overtaking was easier. Now let's compare that to today's cars, and it can't even be side by side without causing a collision, which is just horrible. Why can't they fix it? So I got thinking. Are there any ways to improve Monaco? Will the cars fix the problem? Or could we adjust the track in any way? I asked people on my YouTube community tab and in my Discord, and here's what some of them had to say. All right, so quite a few people think we should remove the Nouvelle Chicane, or the turn thingy, right after the tunnel, so we have one long straight. Now I think this is a decent idea, but that chicane is one of the best places, kinda, to overtake on the track, so should we remove it? And also, we'd need to widen the track there, because otherwise they'd just be following and we wouldn't even have a spot to overtake in. Now, some other people say that near swimming pool and wherever yachts are, they should just widen the track there. Um, now, I think this is a decent idea. I just think that, that that straight, if you want to call that, isn't too long. So you wouldn't have a lot of time to pull out and then go around the chicane and go around the corners afterwards. And of course, Kimmy won't be able to go to his yacht, but it's still a pretty good idea. Now, some people are saying we should just make the track longer. But since all the buildings are already there, it was kind of hard to create a racetrack. Do you know what I did? I packed my bags up and I went to Monaco. I'm just kidding, I just went on Google Maps. I'm sorry I got you excited like that. Anyway, so I found this slip road just before Massenet, and then they follow it past the Zara and then through a sort of mini chicane. Then there's a sharp left-hander past the Sash de Café uh, before going through a twisty part of the racetrack. Then there's a hard right down the Avenue de Roc Roc Roquilielville. I don't know, I'm terrible at pronunciation. If you watch this video, you know what I mean. And then after that, we have another right-hander onto Avenue Saint Michel. Is it Mich Michel? Yeah, Avenue Saint Michel. Um, then there's a bit of a, a straight until you hit Marchiou. Um, and then the track takes you right and then an elongated chicane which then brings you out in, uh, just after Casino, which uh, is pretty cool. I've no idea if this is a feasible idea, but do you want a longer Monaco race? Uh, leave a comment down below. Even if this could never work, I enjoyed my walk around Monaco. Okay, now another idea from my community tab. Um, someone said we should have one shot quality. Um, I'm not I'm not really sure how this would help racing, but it'd still be interesting in qualifying as uh, it would punish the mistakes that drivers make. The only thing we've got to think about is like track evolution and stuff, but still. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. What do you guys think? Now, before I carry on with the improvements to Monaco, I'd like to ask you to consider subscribing. It's free, only takes a few seconds, and you can always unsubscribe later if you want. I'd like to thank you all for the support on the channel recently. The growth has been incredible. And if you want to join this awesome community of F1 fans, subscribe. Thanks. Ooh, we have a diagram from my Discord. Let's take a look at this. Um, they think we should widen the track up the hill and then add a chicane. I think this would be okay. The only thing is here that the run up the hill is one of the only parts of the racetrack that the drivers can actually get some serious speed. I think if we added a chicane, then the average speed would drop even lower than it currently is. I mean, if you had a, you'd have some crazy overtakes there if they added a chicane though, that'd be pretty cool. Um, we've also said to add a, make it more curvy after the hairpin. Um, I think that could work, but I just think someone's house might be in the way and that might not be able to work, but who knows. And they also said to remove the turn thingy after the tunnel. Um, yeah, this could actually work though, the, the removing the new Velsha game, but we'll see. So some people say we should add a joker lap just before the tunnel, um, like near the little roundabout section I think it is. Um, there's actually a very good idea for Monaco as the overtaking problem there is not going anywhere anytime soon. And usually the best chance to overtake is with strategy at Monaco. Um, so let's say if you're like an undercut or an overcut, etc. Now we usually get these with pit stops. But if we had a joker lap, it's like having another pit stop and another opportunity to overtake. So let's say you have to use, I don't know, five joker laps uh, during a race. That is a five extra opportunities to overtake. An example of how this would work is like attack mode in Formula E. If you don't know what that is, basically the car has to come off the racing line through like a little gate and then get a power boost. So uh, it's not the exact same thing as going on a completely different road or a different part of the track, but the premise is still pretty much the same. They have to come off the quicker racing line or quicker part of the track, and some teams do it before others and some do it after, which means you have like different strategies and people can overtake. 
I should also like to say thank you to the 15 people who said they want to remove Monaco from the calendar, and one person literally did. Um, I'm sure this would go down well with the F1 community. Okay, back to the final question of, can the 2022 Formula 1 race cars save the Monaco Grand Prix? Well, unfortunately, these cars are not getting any smaller anytime soon, and they're not really helping themselves with this. This is most prevalent with the new tyres going from 13 inches up to 18 inches. That's a massive increase. So the only way to make Monaco better is by making the cars smaller. I'm going to talk about Formula E again, where the cars are much, much, much smaller than Formula 1 cars. They can pull off these incredible moves. I mean, look at the E Prix from last year. De Costa to the outside and to the lead! All locked up! Gets it stopped! He's going for it now! Oh, what a move! Evans up through Beau Rivage! Take cross! Now I think he'll have to give that position back, surely. They're going to go side by side in two to back! And Evans comes out in front and Gunter takes advantage and gets past John Eric Byrne. Brilliant wheel to wheel racing on the streets of Monaco! Another example of the Formula 2 cars. They're a bit smaller than Formula 1 cars, but they can still pull off some insane dive bomb. Let's have a look at that move again. Oh, on the wet part of the racetrack. Very brave stuff from Dan. <laughs> Getting to Ruvala on the line for reverse grid pole at the very end. Extraordinary. How aggressive were they going to be? It was well behaved and Armstrong was saying, you know what, I'm just going to take it on the road. So how do F1 make it better? Well, of course, they just hire some go-karts for a day and nip around the city on them, of course. <laughs> that would be so fun. <laughs> but actually, they just need to make the car smaller. It's the only thing they can do, unless they want to bulldoze the entire city and build the streets wider from scratch. That's always an idea. So anyway, I'd like to thank you for watching. I've been Connor, and I'll see you later. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>